A few months ago, I reviewed a bike from a new-to-me brand, Fido. Their bike that I reviewed was the T1, and it's a utility bike, and it's a utility bike with some spunk. So much so that I asked the question in my review, is it the fastest utility e-bike, at least in its price range? In the time since my review, there have been big changes with the T1. The main one is that it's been the subject of a recall. In this video, we need to talk about the recall, the reasons why, and what Fido has done to resolve the situation, if that was good or if they maybe missed the mark a bit. One thing is for sure, and that's fortuitous timing, because I was one day away from taking this down to donate it to the local trail nonprofit. Then I received an email, and that email, at least to me, it had all the warning flags of a scam at my first glance because I get a title. Attention, your Fido T1 needs to be replaced. Interesting, because I just had a review bike. It was only passing through my hands temporarily, didn't even own it, so why was I getting an owner's email? But I'm still intrigued, so I read on. We are sorry to notify you that your Fido T1 is on our replacement list, and this is exactly how they wrote this. As far as we know, only a small percentage of the bikes from the batch, don't know what batch, will suffer from the issue. I don't know what the issue is, but ASA precaution, this is exactly how it was written, we urge you to stop using the PR duct and wait for the replacement. It went on to tell me about all the new refinements and great new features of the replacement e-bike and then made some promises. The promises heading, again, this is verbatim, and the promises we made in public will also hold. Here are some highlights. All T1s will enjoy a five-year warranty for the frame from now on, so I'm assuming it's the frame that was breaking. Ah, uh, yes, here, in the next section, we promise that if any of the new T1s suffer from a frame-breaking issue under normal use conditions, Fido will compensate the customer with $10,000. I'm looking for a next line that says something about a Nigerian prince and me needing to wire some money. Maybe I'm growing too cynical, but all this just didn't seem right. Plus, I'm no corporate lawyer, but in America at least, companies, they do everything to try and avoid actually going through with the recall. I can't imagine one going through with the recall and then offering money if something were to happen with the replacement product, much less 10,000 smackers for a bike that only costs a small percentage of that. And there's more. We are confident in the T1 and are sure that no one will have the need to claim this, the $10,000, but feel free to bet against us. And all I need to do to get the replacement bike is send all my contact information, my shipping information, a picture of the bike's serial number, and they'll send it out to me. I know there is a thing called corporate speak, and then there's whatever this is. It's very uniquely worded. So I'm thinking, definitely, it's got to be a scam. But I have an ace up the sleeve, a contact at Fido. So I reached out to them, and I received a response that confirmed this was, in fact, genuine. Wow. Okay, so a few email exchanges later, and I'm told to take the battery and the charger from the old bike and hold them. Wait on the new bike to arrive, use the battery on that, and good to go with a brand new T1 with many improvements. The gray clouds of doubt are subsiding and I can't wait to see the new features on the new T1. This is not it, but it is a rosy picture. Now I did talk about the packaging on the original T1. I was impressed. The packaging on the new T1 even better, complete with an updated picture on the new manual. A bit of assembly using the included tools and I've got a new T1. This is the old T1. I decided to bring it out so I could do a side-by-side -side comparison so I could show exactly what's different, what they've upgraded, because they have made the bike better. Or have they? Well, let's take a look at what's different. First and foremost, I know it was the frame that was breaking, but I don't know exactly where the frame was breaking, though I do have my suspicions. Looking at the new bike, that massive bit of reinforcement tells me that it was probably somewhere in that area. Side by side, you can really see the extra reinforcement. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but it doesn't look bad. It actually looks kind of cool, as does the downward scoop for the rear rack. Now, one other change they made, I complained about the seat height at its lowest level. It was just too high on the original. And you can see extended all the way up. That's the old in the back, the new up front. The new goes way down but it still has a suspension seat post. And the more that I look at this frame, the more that I see it's not just the reinforcement. All these tubes, they look to be just a bit larger, which is a good thing on a utility bike, especially considering that the old one was breaking. Again, not sure exactly where, but 
pretty sure it was back there at the reinforcement. They also made the rack not quite as wide. It's more narrow now. They said this was to accept accessories better, so I'm assuming that they used customer feedback. They also changed the brakes, and this is a big deal. The bike had mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors, now hydraulic disc with 180 millimeter rotors. That's front and rear. A big and welcome change, and I think almost makes it worth having to go through a recall for people that bought this bike. Another change I noticed that wasn't in the email documentation, the kickstand. It's now chain stay mounted. If you'll remember in my original review, they had a center stand. It's kind of like a scooter. I liked it at first, but then I noticed when it folded up because there's a derailleur and a chain, they couldn't fold it all the way up, so there's not a lot of clearance it would rub on stuff. I didn't like that. Well, now, no worries with that. Some big changes, most of the other stuff the same. A lot of the original, I think there's a reflector now in the wheels that wasn't there before. But a lot of the things, the headlights, the rack, all that was present on the old T1. It's carried over to the new T1. So lots of improvement. And that promise of 10 grand if this frame breaks the new frame. Breaks in the course of normal use. So it's all good, right? Well, there is one thing. Someone has to look close to see this, but on that original T1, the motor markings, 48 volt, 750 watts, exactly what the bike is supposed to have according to the marketing documentation. When I looked at the motor on the new bike, whoa, 48 volt, 250 watt. What the? Okay, a couple of deep breaths and an email later, I get a response. Thanks for your attention. The code is simply marked as 250 watt and is actually 750 watt. I've never ever encountered that, but things can happen, so let's go further into this. Because back to that original email, the one that I thought was a scam, it did have this line included in with the improvements, better riding experience from improved pedal assist and throttle modes, which smoothens the acceleration and lowers the sense of jerkiness. Now I can tell you from experience that computer programming on the same motor can make things feel way different. Example, the electric XP prototype that I have is an absolute rocket. When I got XP 2.0, it was still powerful, but it was a very different experience. I mentioned that in my review. Not a problem there, because the people that were buying a 2.0 didn't have that punchy prototype to compare side by side. In this case, that is exactly what's happening. People have their 750 watt Fido T1, they're told not to ride that, and shipped a replacement bike that not only says 250 watts, whether it is or isn't, it's been tuned to feel not as potent, and that's gonna be a problem. I can guarantee, well, I know it's gonna be a problem. I'm already hearing about it while I was putting together this video this came in, and I don't blame her because in my one block that I rode this, I thought, yeah, this does feel like a 250 watt. Who cares if it can be unlocked to have the same top speed as before? If it doesn't get there with as much punch, then to me, it's more like a 250 watt. Now, I believe, Fido, that possibly this is a detuned 750. I just don't understand why they would do this or why they would let that one snafu come out. Because think about this, 250 watts being marked on the motor at the very least. If you get this bike and let's say a year down the road you decide you want to sell it, or you want to take it to your local bike shop and trade it in on something, good luck having a conversation that goes something like this. No, no, this is really 750 watts. Well, why does it say 250? Well, that's a typo. I have an email proving as such. Why does it ride like a 250? Oh, because they detuned it to not ride like a 750. You know, to smooth out the power on a utility bike that actually needs power. Okay, yeah, I'll take less for it. That's what it's going to work out like, I can promise you, and I would be very, very upset if I were someone like Diana that had purchased this bike and I got the 250 marked motor and, well, the performance that comes along with it. Fido, I liked the T1 and I'm glad that you're at least backing it up with a recall and fixing a problem that's there and even making it better in many cases, but as far as this motor marking and the new performance, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I'm even going to let you comment on this video. If you do, I'll pin it to the top so everyone can easily see it. Or feel free to contact me. I'll be more than happy to let you speak your piece in another video. really do think you need to at least address this 
least in comments, because I know there are probably going to be, just look at the comments on this video. Viewers will certainly comment, as I'm sure some Fido T1 owners will, as I see it right now, not cool with the new performance and the questionable marking that really makes me think it's maybe, uh, Okay, I'm just going to leave it here and leave it to the viewers to comment and to T1 owners to comment. What do you think? Thanks for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.